Welcome to this demonstration of SimuWorks. SimuWorks is a model-based tool for operator training and decision support. Today's demonstration will focus on using SimuWorks as a tool to help operators troubleshoot problems with nitrification and chemical phosphorus removal. The SimuWorks simulator has an underlying mathematical model that allows users to investigate plant behavior under different loading conditions and operational scenarios. The simulator contains a series of lessons and exercises that the user can work through to educate themselves about the complexity of a wastewater treatment plant. The model will make predictions of effluent quality, chemical dosage needs and energy use based on the user's inputs of loading, environmental conditions, and operational parameters. So we're going to take a look at two different exercises today, one that is about troubleshooting nitrification, and a second one that is about troubleshooting or optimizing ferric dosage for chemical phosphorus removal. So let's start out by taking a look at the influent flow coming into this plant. I can click on the influent itself here and see that the flow coming in is uh, 2.6 MGD at a temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. The COD coming in is 416 milligrams per liter with a TKN of 42 and we can see here that the ammonia is making up uh, 32 milligrams per liter of that total uh, TKN number. The soluble phosphorus is 13 milligrams per liter and it's at a, an even pH of 7. So now let's take a look at the actual plant itself. I can click on different parts here to get some more details. The flow starts in the lower left hand corner here, comes up through the plant headworks building, and then this building here is for the preliminary ferric dosing for chemical phosphorus removal. The flow then comes through these rectangular primary clarifiers and flows on to the plug flow activated sludge aeration basins. From there it moves to the secondary clarifiers and the recycled sludge is pumped back to the head of the aeration basin. Some of that sludge is taken off here at this WAS control point and pumped over to these gravity thickeners and then the thickened sludge is then hauled away with this truck. There is also a secondary dosage point for chemical phosphorus removal here in building number 9 and the plant effluent comes out up here in the upper right hand corner of the diagram. So let's take a look at what happens when we run a simulation. You do that by coming down here to the lower left hand corner and pressing on the start button. Once you do that, the model will update its predictions of the effluent quality here in this right hand panel. We can see that the BOD is uh, over 50 milligrams per liter, the TSS is 8.3, the ammonia is almost 31, and the TKN is over 30 as well. We can see from these concentrations that this plant is not operating all that well. And our challenge today will be to change the operation of this plant to improve nitrification and specifically try to reduce this ammonia level that is currently over 30 milligrams per liter. So this is the target effluent quality that we are trying to achieve. We need to have a TSS of 10 milligrams per liter or less, a total COD of 35 milligrams per liter or less, and a total ammonia in the effluent of 3 milligrams per liter or less. And we need to achieve all of this while spending less than $65,000 a year on energy costs. You can keep an eye on our energy cost up here in this table, which will be predicting many other things for us as well, including the mixed liquor suspended solids, the SRT or sludge age, the DO in the activated sludge aeration basins, the energy cost, the chemical cost, and the sludge production rate. Now given that the objective of this exercise is to improve the nitrification at this plant, we need to make some decisions about which things we want to change to improve the remo removal of ammonia. We have access to many of the typical parameters that you would be able to set in a wastewater treatment plant. For example, we can come here to the aeration basin and change the airflow or turn on a DO controller. We can set the uh, waste activated sludge flow. We can set the recycle flow and we can come to the clarifiers and take some offline. We can do that up here for the primaries as well and we can control the amount of primary sludge flow too. 
Once you make any changes to the model, you need to come down here and press start again. This will update the model predictions of effluent quality and the other parameters that the model is predicting for us. So let's take a look at what we need to do to improve nitrification in this wastewater treatment plant. There are two conditions that we need to meet in order to have full nitrification in a wastewater treatment plant. The first is to have sufficient oxygen. We need to have two milligrams per liter in our activated sludge aeration basins. This means that we need to either turn on a DO controller or increase the airflow ourselves. The second is to have sufficient residence time. We need to have at least four or five days of SRT to be able to grow enough biomass to sustain an autotrophic population capable of removing the ammonia. We can do this by adjusting the wastage rate to maintain the appropriate amount of solids. So let's start out by taking a look at the DO in the aeration basin. We can see here it's pretty much zero. So we need to make some changes to the operation of this plant to uh, get that DO up. So let's start out by increasing the airflow rate to try and get that DO up to two milligrams per liter. So I'm gonna increase the flow. I'm gonna double it basically and click on start again to see what happens. So that brought us up to uh, 0.1 milligrams per liter. So that's still not enough air to get the residual DO up. And we can see here that the ammonia and the effluent is still pretty high. So let's double that again and press start again. And now uh, we can see here that the DO is up over two milligrams per liter. We can in fact take a look at more detail about the dissolved oxygen in this plug flow aeration basin and see how the oxygen changes as it goes through the length of this tank. You can right click, click on output and go to the profiles tab. And we can see here that because of the tapered aeration, that the uh, dissolved oxygen concentration is over two throughout the length of the plug flow tank. So let's close this menu. Now let's take a look at that plant effluent quality. The ammonia here still looks like it's quite high. It's at about 29 milligrams per liter. So that means that despite having a lot of oxygen, we're still not fully nitrifying. And the reason for that is that our SRT is actually still quite low. It looks like it's about two days and we need at least four or five days of SRT to fully nitrify and we would probably want our mixed liquor to be something more like about 2000 milligrams per liter for a typical nitrifying plant. So let's take a look at making some operational changes to try and get that mixed liquor and that SRT up to a reasonable level. We can do that by trying to change the wastage control here. So if I click on this building, uh, we can see that our wastage rate is at about 160,000 gallons per day. So we could decrease this number and that would waste less out of the system and that would bring our mixed liquor up and our SRT up hopefully to uh, a more appropriate level for full nitrification. So let's start by uh, reducing this uh, wastage rate here. Let's knock it down to 125,000 gallons per day and click on start and uh, let's take a look at these results. Our SRT is now up to about two and a half days uh, and our ammonia is not too bad. It's 25, that's moving down a bit, but our mixed liquor is still quite a bit lower than the desired 2000 milligrams per liter. So let's reduce that again down to say uh, 100,000 and click on start and see where that gets us. So we're now at three days of SRT and our mixed liquor is at 1400. Uh, so we could even reduce that down a bit more. Let's go to 75,000 and run that one more time. And now we can see that uh, we're at four days of SRT and our mixed liquor is up around that 2000 level. However, if we go over and take a look at our effluent quality down here, the ammonia is still at 17.4 milligrams per liter. So we're not down to that fully nitrifying level yet. And the reason, of course, is if we look up here at the DO in the aeration tank, it is actually pretty close to zero. The reason for this is that we have a lot more biomass in the system. And this means that we are doing a lot more nitrification, and therefore we require a lot more air to do that. That airflow that we specified earlier, which was previously okay for that amount of biomass, now that we have more of it, we have to supply some more air. So we could increase this number, or even better, we could uh, turn on this DO controller here, 
And let's leave the, uh, the DO set points at uh, 2 milligrams per liter across the board. And uh, let's run this one more time. And we can come up here and look at these results. We can see the SRT is four days, our DO is two milligrams per liter, and our mixed liquor, well, it's a little bit lower than before. But if we go down here and uh, make a small change, we can bump that up a little bit more, uh, reduce that wastage, and get that mixed liquor up now to about 1,800, 4.2 days of SRT. And now we can see that indeed we are fully nitrifying. Our ammonia down here is now 0.3 milligrams per liter. So let's see how we stack up against the other uh, things that we were supposed to be shooting for, um, the other effluent concentrations. We were supposed to have an effluent solids of 10 milligrams per liter or less, and we have 9.5, so that's good. We were supposed to be less than 35 for COD, and that works. Of course, our ammonia is now less than 3. And the last thing was to try and do this all for less than $65,000 a year of uh, energy. Now, of course, as we increase that airflow, uh, we were increasing the amount of energy used to blow that air into the aeration basins. And we're at $59,300 per year, so we've met our requirement. So here's a quick summary of the final answers to exercise one. We turned on a uh, DO controller. Uh, to control the airflow and that resulted in a total airflow of uh, 22 62 feet cube per minute. Uh, we set the wastage flow at 70,000 gallons per day. That's 2.6 percent of the influent flow that was coming in. We didn't make any changes to the RAS. It was uh, at 2.11 uh, MGD which was 80 percent of the influent flow and that resulted in a mixed liquor of uh, 1837 milligrams per liter with an SRT of 4.2 days and an energy cost of $59,300 per year. This second exercise is about chemical phosphorus removal. So if I run a simulation here, uh, we can see that this plant is uh, set up slightly differently. It's already fully nitrifying. Uh, it uh, has an SRT and uh, mixed liquor concentration is appropriate for that. It is uh, set up and it's doing BOD removal and TSS removal as you would expect. However, it's not doing any significant phosphorus removal. We can see the effluent soluble phosphorus is 10.4 milligrams per liter. So our challenge here is to figure out the uh, best dosage to chemically remove the phosphorus from the wastewater stream. This is done by precipitating it with iron and we have actually two different dosage points in this plant. We have one up at the front end of the plant here at uh, building number three that allows us to add ferric chloride in which case it will precipitate out in the primary clarifiers. And we also have dosage in this building here, number nine, which doses after the bioreactors. And anything that precipitates out will end up in the uh, secondary clarifiers, and some of that will be wasted, and some can come back around to the head of the aeration basin. So let's take a look at our next set of target objectives for our effluent quality. We're shooting for a TSS of 10 milligrams per liter or less. Uh, a total BOD of 10 milligrams per liter or less and we're going to try and get that soluble phosphorus down to 0.3 milligrams per liter. Now it's at 10.4 uh, currently so we are going to have to find an optimal dosage of fire chloride to be able to make that work and we need to do this for a cost of less than $75,000 per year. There are some advantages and disadvantages to using primary versus secondary ferric dosage. Primary dosage is very effective at removing the phosphorus as the precipitation reaction happens in the primary clarifier and the precipitated phosphorus can then be removed out with the primary sludge. In secondary dosage, which comes after the aeration basin, that precipitated material becomes part of the mixed liquor and it settles out in the secondary clarifiers and is recycled back around and, and becomes part of that maintenance of solids that you have in your activated sludge system. That newly formed uh, chemical sludge will of course be wasted out along with the waste activated sludge, but it, it can impact your VSS to TSS ratio uh, in your bioreactor. Dosing too much in the primaries upstream of the biological activity can be a problem in and of itself. The biological activity uh, requires some soluble phosphorus to go ahead. So therefore, if you have lowered the soluble phosphorus coming into the bioreactor too low, then the growth can be impacted. So many plants try to use a combination of both primary and secondary dosage to make sure they get low phosphorus levels without impacting their biological activity. 
So our simulator will allow us to play with uh, upstream and downstream dosage in order to find the optimal amount. Okay, let's start out the second exercise by first just taking a peek at the uh, dosage as it's already been set up for us. So if I click here on this uh, primary dosage unit, we can see there's no dosage happening at all. It's set to zero. And same thing here in building number nine for the secondary dosage. So let's go back to the primary. And let's uh, set this up for uh, 50 kilograms of iron per day. And then I click on start. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, simulation results. We can see up here that our mixed liquor has actually gone up a little bit. And we see here that the soluble phosphorus in the effluent has actually gone down from 10.4 to 8.3. So we're moving uh, in the right direction. So let's uh, come back and uh, bump that up a little bit more. We could increase this to uh, 75 uh, kilograms per day. And we hit start again. And let's take a look at the results. Uh, we can see here it's at 7.05 milligrams per liter, so let's bump it up to 100 uh, kilograms per day dosage. And let's see where that puts us at about 5.9 milligrams per liter, but our mixed liquor is starting to get uh, a bit high. So we could use some wastage control here. We could increase the wastage a little bit to try and keep that mixed liquor in line. So let's try and bring that down by increasing it to uh, 27,000 uh, gallons per day and run the simulation again and see what kind of effect that has. So we've uh, decreased uh, the mixed liquor down to 4,100 and our effluent soluble phosphorus is at about 5.8 milligrams per liter. So let's check in and look at our chemical costs at this point. We're at $33,000 per year roughly and we were hoping to keep that under $75,000 per year. Now we're not quite all the way down uh, to the required uh, 0.3 milligrams per liter yet, so let's make uh, a change here um, uh, to the secondary chemical dosing. And uh, let's add in, uh, we'll start small here just to get a feeling for how this is going to work. Uh, let's start with 25 kilograms and I hit start again and we'll get an update on our uh, performance down to 4.4 now milligrams per liter. So um, uh, let's uh, try and push that up to uh, 50 and we'll keep an eye on our costs and on our mixed liquor. Uh, since now we're dosing in the secondary uh, part of the plant, then we're going to have some effect on the mixed liquor, uh, definitely. So 3 milligrams per liter in the effluent, um, our mixed liquor is uh, up about um, uh, 4,700. So I think we need to make another adjustment to our uh, wastage control because we now have a lot more inert solids in our system. So uh, let's adjust that and run it again. It's bringing our mixed liquor down a little bit. And uh, it also has small impact on the soluble phosphorus is, itself as, uh, of course, we're, when we're wasting more, we're removing a little bit of uh, that chemical sludge out of the system uh, as well. Okay, so let's bump that uh, up a little bit uh, and try again, try to get that mixed liquor down. Uh, we're not impacting our SRT too much. We still have seven days, so uh, we still have enough to, to fully nitrify. Let's try uh, 45,000 here. So now we're down at uh, six days of uh, SRT, 3,200 milligrams per liter. That's not too bad. Uh, but now we have the opportunity to uh, bump up our, our dosage in the secondary as well to see if we can get all the way down. Let's make another adjustment on our uh, wastage as well to keep the SRT in line. So now we're down to 1.2 milligrams per liter. It's not quite all the way down to the 0.3 that we need, but we're, we're getting close. So let's see if we can drive this uh, last uh, 1.2 milligrams per liter down to the, the 0.3 that we need by making a, a last few adjustments here. So let's increase this uh, one more time while we keep an eye on our mixed liquor and uh, our SRT. We're looking at 3,300, we're at five, so we're still gonna be fully nitrifying. And now we can see, actually, we've made it down. We're at 0.23 at this point, uh, milligrams per liter, so we've met that, uh, that minimum requirement there. So let's take a look at the other ones. Uh, our, our total solids here um, are, are kind of high, partly because our mixed liquor is high. So let's uh, just make another further adjustment there. Uh, bump that up so that we're gonna bring that mixed liquor down without uh, lowering our SRT too much. So it looks okay, it's at 4.25 days. Our effluent solids are just over the limit there. So let's just take one last little adjustment here to the wastage to try and bring down uh, the solids in the system a little bit more. 
press start again, take a look, and uh, our SRT is still four days, so we're still doing okay. Our effluent ammonia is still fine. Uh, and our mixed liquor is at 2400 milligrams per liter, so that's in good shape. Uh, I think our DO is fine because we got the DO controller on and our effluent ammonia and the phosphorus are both under the targets that we had uh, looked to achieve. So let's take one last look at our chemical cost now for all that dosing that we have been doing. We needed to keep it under 75,000 and we have it at 65,700. So indeed, we have met all the requirements and completed uh, this challenge. So here's a quick summary of the final answers for exercise two. We dosed 100 kilograms of the metal per day in both the primary and secondary dosage points. Our uh, wastage flow was 75,000 gallons per day, which is 2.8% of the influent flow. Uh, we left the recycle flow as it was at 80% of the influent flow, 2.1 uh, MGD. Our mixed liquor was uh, 2,400 milligrams per liter with an SRT of four days. The energy cost was uh, somewhat similar to the first exercise, $58,500 per year. And our chemical cost to do uh, both of these dosages uh, was $65,700 per year. So hopefully this gives you a bit of a feel for how this model can be used to teach in a very intuitive and interactive way where the students can iterate through and learn the relationships between the different parts of the activated sludge system. So they can learn the challenges with trying to increase your biomass to be able to reach a certain treatment level, but then having to deal with those solids and maybe you need to waste more. How much does that affect my SRT? Uh, to look at dosing and seeing how that chemical solids that are being added to the system are important. And to do all that within a reasonable operating budget with respect to energy requirements and chemical dosage costs. So thank you for joining us today for this demonstration of SimiWorks. If you would like further information on any of our products, please visit our website at www.hydromantis.com or send us an email at info at hydromantis.com.